Are you ready for the word tonight? Amen. Let's close our eyes quickly. Father, thank you for this moment we have to be in your presence. I pray that you will speak to us tonight and help us to have ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to respond. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Tonight I want to talk to you from the topic, building the Lord's house. Building the Lord's house. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So the Lord is building his house. The Bible says Jesus is the chief cornerstone. And you and I are living stones, living bricks as he builds his church. God is not a building a church of brick and mortar. He is building a spiritual dwelling forever. And therefore, you and I, we are the church, and we are in partnership with our Father, helping Him to build His house. In 2 Samuel chapter 1, we read in verse 1 to 17, it says the following. Now it came to pass when the king was dwelling in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies all around, that the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar. But the ark of God dwells inside ten curtains. Then Nathan said to the king, Go and do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. We find here the story of King David. Now I want you to see something about King David. The passion he had, the vision he had, the realization that, hey, I am blessed and I live in a a nice house but my God that gave me all of this doesn't have a house to dwell. David was made to be king of Israel because David had a heart for God. David was focused to build God's house in his time. Even though he was blessed, the Bible says here, David had rest from all his enemies. The Lord gave him peace in surrounding. He didn't have to do war every day or every month or every year. But David, the moment that he had peace, his focus shifted to the house of the Lord. Family, you need to understand that David was never made to be a warrior. David was a shepherd's boy. David had a shepherd's heart, but God had to make him a warrior for the purpose of leading his people. So it's very important that you have a shepherd's heart and a warrior's heart when you want to lead God's people. Because this is a battle. To build God's house is a battle. But let's see what David had in his heart. It says, Then Nathan said to the king, Go and do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, This is the Lord. Would you build, me a, house? Would you build a house for me to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. Even to this day, but I have moved about in a tent and in, tabern- in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about with all the children of Israel, have I ever spoken a word to anyone from the tribes of Israel whom, I'm commanded, uh, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? So God is saying, David, have I ever said to you as my people, why am I dwelling in this tent and you guys have all the nice stuff? He says, I've never done that. Now, therefore, this, says you, uh, this, this shall you say to my servant David, this is the Lord of hosts. I took you from the sheepfold, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I have been with you wherever you have gone. And I have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I've made you a great name, like the name of the great men who are on the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them any more, as previously. Since the time that I command the judges to be over my people Israel, I have caused you to rest from all your enemies. Also the Lord tells you, that he will make you a house. When your days are full fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up 
your seed after you, you who will come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name and I will st establish the throne of his kingdom for e forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. What did God say? David, I didn't ask anybody to build my house. And here you come and you say, I want to build a house for my God. He says, David, just because you had a house, a heart to build me a house, what I am gonna do, I am gonna determine the place and I am gonna use your son to build my temple and establish your reign forever. He says, I am not gonna do with you what I did with Saul, removing him and his whole lineage from being king. But David, just because you had a heart to build my house, this is what I am gonna do. Family, one of the key things I believe that made King David a man after God's heart was the fact that he had a great passion and desire to build the Lord's house. King David set his heart and his mind to build God's house and to build a great house for God. When you study the life of King David, you find that after God said to him, David, you ain't gonna build the house. Your son is. That David provided everything for the building of God's house. David provided in his lifetime more than enough to build God's house. That's amazing. Do you have a heart to build God's house? Is God putting it in your heart to build His house? Amen. Or do you need people to tell you to build God's house? All David's success, his victories and achievements stemmed from this passion he had to build the Lord's house or the house of God. I wanna give you eight things tonight that can help you to set your heart to build God's house as a child of God. Listen to me, born again Christian. No one after you got born again should encourage you to build God's house. You should have it in your heart. Be a David. Be like King David. Set your heart to build the Lord's house. That's number one. Be like David. You need to set your heart to build God's house. Do not allow anybody to encourage you or to push you or to beg you or to ask you nicely, can you please build the Lord's house? No, be like King David. Set your heart. I'm setting my heart to build the house of the Lord. In 1 Kings 8 verse 17, it says, Now it was in the heart of my father David to build a temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father, whereas it was in your heart to build a temple for my name, you did well that was in your heart. King David had it in his heart. Nobody encouraged him. He had it himself in his heart to build God's house. What is in your heart tonight, child of God? Do you need people to push you, to encourage you, to tell you? Or do you have it like King David already in your heart as a passion to build God's house? Just think about it. if every one of us in this place or under my voice tonight leave the service and determine it in our heart to have a passion like King David to provide to build God's house, to go out and build God's house, to sleep, eat and drink to build God's house. What a difference we will make as a church in our communities, in our cities, in our countries. In Nehemiah chapter two, verse 12, it says, then I arose in the night and, I, and a few men with me. I 
told no one what God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem, nor was there any animal with me except the one on which I rode. Here again, a builder of God's city, a builder of God's house, Nehemiah. He says, no one told me that. I have told no one what God has placed in my heart. I have told no one what the Lord has put into my heart. What has God put into your heart, child of God, member of CRC London? What has he given you to build his house? What, has, what gifts has he given you? What word has he placed in your heart? Are you focused? Are you determined to see that the Lord's house expands, that more people are getting saved, that more people are getting planted? What's in your heart? Is your heart to only come and fill a seat or come and to serve? Or is your heart and your life focused to make sure that the church multiply, that the church grow larger and larger? God's not, we serve a big God. Amen. He doesn't want to stay in a one bedroom flat. Amen. He's building a huge place for himself to dwell in. So God is after people. Amen. Number two, have a mind to build the house of God. You have to set your mind to build the house of God. Every Sunday when you come to church and come to a church service, through the preaching of the word, the Holy Spirit will set our minds on what is important. He will set our minds on the word. He will set our minds on the house of God. He will set our minds on the principles of the kingdom of God. Is your mind set or is your mind all over the place? In 1 Chronicles chapter 22, it's 7, it says, And David said to Solomon, My son, as far as for me, it was in my mind to build the house to, uh, to build a house to the name of the Lord my God. So it was not just a heart thing, it was a mind thing. Hello, come talk to me tonight. If you agree, say amen. amen. It has to be in your heart and in your mind. David said, it was in my mind to build. So what is in your mind tonight? Are you more mindful about your lack? Are you more mindful about your problems, relationships problems? Family problems, financial problems? Or are you mindful to build your home cell? Are you mindful to build people? I wanna help you. Those problems will come and those problems will go. Don't get distracted by those things. The way out of that is to keep on building God's house, to put your mind again on God's house. Your world may fall apart over here, but if your mind is set, on that building the house of God and helping people, you will see how God gets you out of those stuff very, very quickly. The devil is very quick, uh, very good to quickly shift our mindset towards what is happening in our lives and not what we are supposed to make happen in our lives. You are on planet Earth as a born again Christian to build God's house. As your mindset, is it in your heart? Keep it in your heart and keep it in your mind. When you go through things, I have learned. When I go through things, I get my mind back on building. I step an extra step into building God's house. And the moment you do that, the smaller those issues and problems become. Too many born again Christians get trapped in that. They shift their mind. Oh, I'm now too busy. Oh, I'm going through this. Oh, no, I need to step back. Don't step. <laughs> the moment you step back, you step into the trap. Say it with me. The moment I step back, I step into the trap. You can, that's a golden nugget. Never step back. No matter what's happening here, be focused to build God's house. Set your heart, set your mind and go after building God's help. Go help somebody, lead somebody to Jesus, baptize somebody, pray for somebody, and you will quickly see how these elements in your life shifts. Nehemiah said, the people had a mind to work. So, in Nehemiah chapter four, verse six, it says, so we built the wall, and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height. For the people had a mind to work. Not just one, the people. 
Hello, family. Hello, CRC. We might be in different campuses, but we are one. Come on. And we are working together, everyone. Playing a part, everyone. Doing our part. Come on. The people had a mind to build. CRC, London, do we, have, do we still have a heart and a mind to build? Are we working together? Yes or no? Let's make a fresh commitment tonight to have it in our mind as a group of people, as a family, to build like never before. We don't care what other places are doing, but in our campuses, in our church, we have a mind to build. We're here to build people. We're here to build home cells. We're here to build campuses. We're here to build churches. We have a mind to build. The third thing I want to share with you is use the time the Lord gave you here on earth to build His house. So it must be in your heart, it must be in your mind, but use the time. God has given you time. Don't waste your time. Don't wait, oh, I'm gonna start building after I've done Bible school three years from now. Uh oh, no, a thousand times no. Rather start now. You can finish the Bible school 10 years from now, but start now to build the house of the Lord. Start now to build somebody else's life. Help them through the journey. Baptize them, fill with the Holy Spirit, pray with them, teach them how to pray, teach them how to reach out, teach them how to win souls, teach them how to multiply, teach them how to become. Amen. Didn't Jesus say, go into the world, make disciples, baptize them, and teach them? Who are you teaching? Who are you mentoring? Who are you training? Hello, I'm saying, who are you teaching? Who are you mentoring? Who are you training? Who are you showing? Come on, use your time well. Amen. There's so many things in our world that fights for our time. The most important one is the building of God's house. Amen. Amen. Spend 90% of your time building God's house and God will take care of the rest. Amen. I'm glad you're so excited. I hope you're excited, more excited over there in the other campuses. So nothing of significance gets built in a day. Amen? So I've told you so many times that most of you under 50, uh, under 40, under, let me say under 35, has a microwave mentality. You, you want it now. You want success now. You got brought up with the microwave, you know. Some of us got brought up, if you, you want to make food, it's going to take an hour and a half. Not for your generation. You just take the ready-made, put it in the mic, and off you go. Amen. Life doesn't work that way. To build, the, to build anything of significance, take time. Amen. So we don't waste our time, but we know that if we want to build something of significance, it's going to take time. It never happens in a moment. It takes time to build a great church. It takes time to build a great life. It takes time to grow, build a great family. It takes time to build a great business. It takes time to build a great career. It takes time to build a great home cell. Amen. It takes time to build people. Who, if you, who, who, who are you building? Don't wait. Don't wait till you're ready. You get ready as you build others. Hello? And the quicker you build others, the quicker you're going to become ready. In 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 38, it says the entire building was completed in, in every detail by the medio, mid, or whatever, in the month of Bull, during the 11th year of his reign. So it took seven years to build the temple. So Solomon, for King Solomon, it took seven years to build the temple. Hello, you want to do great things for God, it's going to take you years to get the correct character, stay faithful. 
Are you guys with me? Say, thank God I am busy being built. Yes, the Lord is building you. He's building me. He takes his time. Everything of significance get built in time. Amen. Let's see what King David also did in 1 Chronicles chapter 29. For the house of my God I have prepared with all my might, gold for things to be made of gold, silver for things of silver, bronze for things of bronze, iron for things of iron, wood for things of wood, unic stones, stones to be set, glistering stones and various colors of all kinds of precious stones and marble slabs in abundance. Moreover, I have set my affection on the house of my God. I set my heart, I set my mind, I set my affection. Are you still in love with your church, your campus? Is there still there, is there still a excitement on a Sunday morning at six o'clock when you have when you wake up and you need to get to your campus to set it up and serve? Come on, I hope I'm speaking to the right crowd. Come on. You're still affectionate. Still in love? Come on, I hope so. For I've set my affection on the house of God. I've given to the house of my God over and above all I have prepared for the holy house. My own special treasure of gold and silver, 3,000 talents of gold, of the gold of offer, and 7,000 talents of refined silver to overlay the walls of the houses the gold for things of gold and the silver for things of silver and for all kinds of work to be done by the hands of the craftsmen. Who then is willing to consecrate himself this day to the Lord? Then the leaders of the father's houses, leaders of the tribes of Israel, the captains over thousands and of hundreds with the officers over the king's worth offered willingly. Amen. Amen. Offered willingly. Now I've lost my place. Don't touch your iPad. <laughs> they gave for the work of the house of God 5,000 talents and 10,000 derricks of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron. And whoever had precious stone gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord into the hand of Jehiel the Gershonite. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> then the people rejoiced for they had offered willingly because with a loyal heart they had offered willingly. So people with loyal hearts, they offer willingly. Amen. And King David also rejoiced greatly. Look what King David did. He didn't just say, okay, Nathan, now, now my son is going to build it. I am, I, I'm free. No, no, no. He prepared. He made sure that there was more than enough. And because he gave, he encouraged all the leaders and all the people to give willingly. And those with loyal hearts... It's a terrible place to be a child of God or a born-again Christian and you don't give. It's not a terrible, it's a horrible place. There's something wrong with your heart. I want to encourage you to give willingly with a loyal heart into the work of the Lord. Amen. Do not let anybody ever tell you to build God's house. Do not let everybody ever tell you to serve in God's house. Do not let anybody ever tell you to give toward God. God's house or God's work. Those are three no-goes for any born-again Christian. Amen. It's a slap in your face if you need people to tell you to serve, tell you to give, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. tell you to have a heart for God's house. Really. Number five. Build with the family that the Lord gave you. Build Look around, look left, look right, look in front of you, look behind you. Look, this is your family. Build with the family that the Lord has given you. 
Stop wanting to build out there and with that one or with this one. No, God has chose a family for us and He knows best. And if God has chosen this family for you and I, then we build together as a family. We build in unity. We set our minds together. We all have a mind to build, not just 10% of us. We all give. We all serve. We all reach out. We all, say it with me, we all. In 1 Chronicles 22, it says, Indeed, I've taken much trouble to prepare for the house of the Lord, 100,000 talents of gold, 100 million talents of silver, gee, 1 million talents of silver, and bronze and iron beyond measure, for it is so abundant. I have prepared timber and stone also, and you may add to them. Moreover, there are workmen with you in abundance. This is a pastor's dream, amen? amen. Woodsmen and stone cutters and all types of skillful men for every kind of work of gold and silver and bronze and iron, there is no limit. Come on, why can't we get to a place where on a Monday morning, I phone Annalene at the church office, uh, at the finance office, how's, hello, uh, Annalene, how's the bank account? Pastor, there is no limit. Don't you think that would be amazing? Pastor, whatever is in your heart, just do it because there is no limit. Don't you think we can get there? I think David got there. There is no limit. Amazing. Arise and began, be, be, begin working and the Lord will be with you. David also commanded all the leaders of Israel to help Solomon, his sons, saying, is not the Lord your God with you? And has he not given you rest on every side? For he has given the inhabitants of the land into my hand, and the land is subdued before the Lord and before his people. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Therefore arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord, to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord uh, and the holy articles of God into the house that is to be built for the name of the Lord. Come on. We can learn so much from these people. Number six. Building the Lord a house is giving him another body to dwell. So when you are building the house of the Lord, what do you do? You give the Lord another body to dwell in. The Bible says to us that we are the temple of God. When we get born again, we become the temple of God, the dwelling place of God on earth. So how can I effectively build the house of God? I win souls. I tell people about Jesus. I tell them to get born again. I pray for them. I lead them to Christ. I baptize them. I fill them with the Holy Spirit. Amen. I walk with them. I train them. I teach them. In 1 Peter 2, verse 4 and 5, it says, Coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also as living stones are being built up in a spiritual house a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, 17. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Friends, family, building the house of the Lord is building people. You want to build the house of the Lord? Learn to build people. I want to leave you with a slogan. People matter people. People matter people. Every person God connects you with matters. It is your responsibility to build strong and healthy relationships. Don't just bring them to church and leave them as an orphan. Come on, you've prayed for them. You shared life with them. You shared the gospel with them. They're getting saved. Now after that, walk with them. Don't just pass them to the pastor. Yeah, pastor, I've made the baby, but you, you raise them. No, I take care of the people that God sends over my path. I am well able. I, come on, you are well able. Take it one at a time. 
Let's we all tonight commit to take one person and mature them for Jesus. Amen. Who are, who's committed with me? Right. You're gonna get one person saved and you're gonna walk with them and three years from now, they're gonna still sit next to you at church or they're gonna do greater things than you are doing. Come on, let's walk with people. Let's make it sure that people matter. It's about people, people. The Lord's house is made up of people. The greatest gift you can give Jesus is another person to dwell in. What can I do for the Lord? Give him another vessel to dwell in. Tell people about Jesus, help them to get saved, help them to get baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, planted in church, and trained in the things of God. In John 14, 2, it says, in my Father's house, there's many mansions, many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. God doesn't, God's not into small churches. God says, never despise the days of small beginnings. But I mean, if you now were born in 1977 and you're still wearing diapers today and you're this high, wouldn't it be odd? Wouldn't people look at this and say, gee, this is strange. This shouldn't be like this. Hello? No, for the church, exactly the same. If we've now been going for 25 years and we're still just 200 in a small, or 150 in a small building. That's right. Isn't that odd? Uh -huh. Isn't that strange? Yeah. Only comfortable religious people finds their security in small little places. It's odd. God has not started a church for a church to be small. Right. Hello? The church must grow. Your home cell must grow. Your life must grow. Amen. God's the God that produces growth. He's after much fruit. Number seven, building the Lord's house is a choice. We're talking about building the Lord's house. It is a constant choice. You will have to make that choice daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. Five years from now, you will make, have to make that choice. 10 years from now, you will have to make that choice. 20 years from now, you will have to make that choice. And testing you, you will be tested by the Lord. Yearly, five yearly, 10 yearly, 20 every decade, you will be tested. Do you have stickability? Can you stay in the place that God has called you. Joshua 24 verse 15, 14 says, Therefore, fear the Lord, serve Him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day who you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Every young man in this place say after me, myself and my house will serve the Lord. Come on, say it with me. Myself and my house will serve the Lord. You will be tested. You will marry a girl that will, might turn out to be a Delilah. You might not think she would, but she can easily. Can you still then say, me and my house will serve the Lord. I will not get influenced. I will not become an Ahab. I will stand strong. I will stay committed to the man of God, the house of God that God has placed me in. You have to understand how Satan works. He gives you time. He knows that in the beginning of your journey with Jesus is, oh, you're so in love and everything as well. And then... It changes, then commitment, then responsibility, then more children, more people, bigger things, more pressure. And then he comes. 
After years of the Lord working in your life, years of the Lord training you, years of Lord and people sorting out all your nonsense, then you need to grow up and be mature to be a blessing to the next generation. And then Satan comes and he rips you out of the place that God has placed you for years. Oh, no, but God spoke to me. Oh, I saw another vision. Oh, I got a better pastor or pastors. Be very careful because you will give account one day. You're going to give account for what God has put into you and what you have given. Make up your mind. I stay in the place that God has called me. I will pass every test. And if I am 85 years old, I will still serve the Lord and build his house. Amen. Number eight, build your life and build your life on the rock. When we're talking about building God's house, we're talking about you building people. But never forget that you are also the house of the Lord, that you are also the dwelling place. So do not neglect yourself. Make sure that you yourself are building your life on the rock, that you build your life on the word of God, that you build your life on the ways of the kingdom, of the ways of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 7, 24, it says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be likened to a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. I want to encourage you before we go tonight to make sure that you build your life on the rock. I want you to know that there is no greater joy for Jesus than you building your life on the Word of God and you building your life on the principles found in the Word of God. It gives Him great joy when you build your life. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your life, young people. Don't wait for another day. Take God's Word seriously. Build your life on the Word. If you are here today and you are under 25 and you are born again and you have Jesus, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're planted in a great church like this, man, you can do great things for God. Become serious about the Word of God. Become serious about building your life on the Word of God. Become serious about building God's house. I tell you, there is no greater joy for the Lord that seeing you being focused on building your house. So build your life. If you have a family, build your family. If you have a business, build your business. If you have a church, build your church. If you have a campus, build that campus. It gives the Lord great joy when something small gets bigger. He says, never despise the days of small beginnings, but rejoice. Know that God wants to make small things big. Come on. So building your life on the rock is building your life on Jesus. It is wisdom. When the storms of life come and you know how to deal with it God's way, you will find God taking you through every storm. You will find yourself still standing on the solid rock when the storm has passed. Are you building your life on the rock? Are you building your life on your family's patterns? Are you of belief systems or are you building your life on the word of God and the correct belief systems through faith in God? Amen. Come on, this is your time, this is your hour. You have a fresh start, a new beginning. None of you are 95. We are all still young in the Lord and we can get back to what we need to do for God. I do not know what God has placed in your heart, but I am here tonight to stir, to fan the flame that God has already told you to do for Him in this city, in this nation, in this generation. Come on, once again, set your heart, set your mind, set your passion towards God's house, and you will see how God will use you to do great and mighty things.
Come on, you are the seed of Abram. We are the seed of Christ to be a blessing, not just to our little communities, but to the nations out there. We have to go into all the world. Amen. We have to spread across the whole United Kingdom. It is time for you to rise up and shine for the light of the Lord has risen upon you. Believe that you can. Believe that you are called. Know that God is with you, that He has placed you in a place that is never going to prevent you to do big things. We're never going to tell you, oh, slow down. We might tell you, come on, a little bit more, but we're never going to tell you to calm down. There's a whole nation to be saved. Come on, let's go out this week. Come on, you know, as, you, as I preach here, you know the Holy Spirit in this moment will give you five people immediately that you can reach out to, that you can draw to, that you can love on, that you can share the gospel to. And they will come because you invite them, because you spend time with them. Come on, don't be a religious dead Christian. Be the life for people. Amen. The Bible says we are the trophies of Christ. For some people, we smell like life leading to life, and for others, we smell like death leading to death. Come on. What people will know about Jesus is what they see in your life. What they will know about the Word of God is what they read through you. So come on, you have to believe in yourself. CRC London, it's time for us to once again commit to build God's house. Come on, don't neglect your own life. Build your life on the Word of God. Study the Word of God. Implement the Word of God. Stay upon the Word of God. When the world falls apart, you need to be able to speak the Word. When Satan attacks you, you need to be able to say, greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am planted on the rock. I will not fail. I will not fall. I will not be forsaken. My God is with me. He is before me. He is behind me. He is beside me. Amen. Come on. Let's go back. Go find somebody this week that you can help building their lives. Amen. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, we thank you for the word tonight. We thank you that you brought us together for a purpose. In every campus, every church, I thank you for every life that's under my voice. Thank you that you know us by name. Lord, I wanna ask you, Holy Spirit, that you will remind us to get our focus back. Set our hearts again on building your house. Set our minds, our affection. Help us to build it on the rock every day, the word of the Lord. And we thank you for every person that's here tonight. We thank you that you have great and mighty plans with their lives. You promise that you have a hope and a future. But Father, I do not only want to pray for your church tonight. I want to pray for those who do not know you as Lord and Savior. Those who have never committed their lives to you. Those who do not have the assurance of eternal life. Those who do not know what will happen today with, the, with them the day they die. And maybe you are here tonight and you fall in one of those categories. You do not have Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You do not have assur the assurance of eternal life. You know that your life is not right with God. I want to ask you, can I please pray for you? Before I go tonight, I want to lead you in a simple prayer that can change your life. Because tonight... If you are not right with God, God is calling you. God is telling you to make right with Him because God has a hope and a future for you. So if it's you that I'm talking about in every campus, in this auditorium, and maybe they're online, and you say, that's me. I need to be included in this prayer. While all the heads are bowed and the eyes are closed, I want you to do something for me. I want you to just slip up your hand if you want me to include you in a simple prayer that will change your life. If it's you that I'm talking about, I want you to quickly just slip up your hand. If you've put it up, you can put it down. Thank you, I see your hand. Come on, if you need to make right with God, make right with Him tonight. Slip up your hand, let me pray with you. So Father, we thank you for every person that's saying yes 
in their hearts. For everyone that's putting up their hands, let your kingdom come and your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say, Amen. If you receive the word with me, please stand to your feet and give Jesus a very big hand. And as we clap, I'm going to ask you to do something bold for me. You've put up your hand. You haven't put up your hand in every campus. I want to ask you to quickly make your way down to the altar so that I can pray with you. If you are sitting in this auditorium and you are sitting in the back and you need to be included in this prayer, I want you to come down to the last section. If you are here in the front and you know you need to be included in this prayer, I want you to come down to the altar here in all the other campuses. I want you to quickly make your way down to the altar so that I can pray for you. Come, tonight is your night. Today is your day. Come to Jesus. Come on. He loves you. He has a great plan and a future for your life. And we're going to pray with you. And God is going to do something amazing in your life. He's going to save you, heal you, restore you. Come to Jesus tonight. Come. Wherever you are, come. We're going to pray together. Come. beautiful people that's in front of a church to quickly look up. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. It's so simple. Just focus on the Lord. Give Him all your heart and He's going to take all your life and give you something special and new. And it's such an honor for me to pray with you. I want you to know that no man can get you to do this. Jesus said, if we lift Him up, He will draw people unto Him. And that's what's happening. I'm just the facilitator. So come on, let's pray together. Put your hand in your heart and pray this out loud. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for today that you spoke to my heart. I've heard your voice. Please forgive me. I know I'm a sinner in need of your grace. And I ask you today to forgive me. I receive your grace. I receive your love for me. I receive acceptance. And I know that you love me and today I am saved. I believe of all my heart that Jesus is your son, the savior of the world. And today I am saved by Jesus. I ask you, Father, to fill me with the Holy Spirit, to plant me in your church, and to use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you have prayed that prayer with us, and you are standing in front of the auditorium, I want you to call altar, I want you to quickly look left, look right, you will find people waving at you. Do me a kind favor, just follow them out of the auditorium. So we want to give you a Bible and a gift, and then we're going to bring you straight back. And if you have prayed that prayer and you're still standing somewhere in the congregation, you didn't come out, I want to ask you just to come after the service, find one of the leadership and tell them that you have committed your life to Jesus because it's so important that we get to you the right materials and to help you on this journey. Thank you so much for all the churches that have been with us today. I'm excited to see you next Sunday, same time, same place. Have a wonderful week and go out this week and go build God's house. God bless you and bye-bye.